The human's arm was a mangled mess, blood dripping onto the steel floor of the lab as the massive Xyrax predator gnawed on the limb like a chew toy. Yet somehow the crazy man was laughing, ecstatic he finally got the murderous creature to play with him. The holographic video of the incident played on repeat as the Romulan xenozoologists Mizar and Tari stared at it in disbelief while walking to the conference room. They had to convince the council to let humans help them control the Xyraxes immediately, or their cities would soon be overrun. Rewind that again. Look at that, Tari. The blasted human let the thing maul him, and he's just giggling away like it's a game. A game that may be our only hope. Every day more Xyrax are breaching the wildlife barriers and hunting our outskirts. It's only a matter of time until they decimate our populace. That human, though, Raymond Russell, he's insane. A genius, sure, but insane. When he requested to come help control the Xyrax, I thought the council would laugh him off our planet. But after he showed that video of him playing with the biggest Xyrax specimen we have in captivity, they gave him a chance. A better chance than they gave any Romulan. They've never let any of our people close to the beasts unsupervised. And how many Xyrax did we cull in retaliation? Half a million, more all for nothing. But one human is making progress after a single week. The Xyrax Whisperer, they're calling him back on Earth. He's trained hundreds of deadly alien species, but even his own people think he's crazy for trying the Xyrax. They say humans tame creatures by forming bonds, by play, by trust. The idea of a Xyrax trusting anything is ludicrous. Ludicrous? But if it works, if Russell trains even one Xyrax, it's a start. We can learn his ways, turn the Xyrax into tools instead of adversaries. They'll guard our cities instead of destroying them. They'll expand our territories instead of confining us. And if Russell fails, the Council exiles him and we go back to culling, back to living in fear until the Xyrax finally overrun us. For once we have to believe in a human's insanity, because if Russell can't control the Xyrax, no one can, and our civilization falls. As they continued walking, Tari turned to Mizar, his curiosity piqued. So how exactly did this Russell fellow approach studying the Xyrax? What made his method so different from ours? Mizar's eyes lit up, eager to share what he had learned. Well, for starters, Russell didn't come alone. He brought a team of five other humans, each with a unique skill set he believed would be essential in understanding and potentially taming the Xyrax. A team, intriguing. Who were these individuals? Let's see, there was Dr. Andrew Chen, a behavioral psychologist, Jack Thompson, an animal trainer, Dr. Liam O'Connor, a geneticist, Ethan Kim, a technology specialist, and Dr. Nathan Patel, a linguist. Quite the diverse group, wouldn't you say? Russell and his team set up a state-of-the-art research facility within the designated area. They had everything, high-tech surveillance equipment, reinforced enclosures, and a whole array of tools and devices designed specifically for studying the Xerax. It was unlike anything we've ever seen. Fascinating. And what was their first breakthrough? Mizar grinned. This is where it gets really interesting. Russell and Dr. Patel discovered that the Xyrax have a complex communication system involving vocalizations, body language, and pheromones. By deciphering this language, they gained a deeper understanding of the Xyrax's social structure and behavior patterns. Tauri's eyes widened. They cracked the Xyrax's communication code. That's incredible. No Romulan scientist has ever been able to do that. Exactly. It was a groundbreaking discovery, and that was just the beginning. Russell's team also... Mazar leaned forward, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. But that's not all, Tauri. What Russell and his team did next was even more incredible. Tauri's eyes widened. What happened? Well, armed with their newfound knowledge of the Xyrax's communication system, Russell and his team set out to observe the creatures in their natural habitat. But here's the thing. They didn't just watch from a distance like we've always done. No, they got up close and personal. How? The Xyrax would have torn them apart. Mizar grinned. That's where Ethan Kim's genius came in. He developed this advanced camouflage technology that allowed the team to blend in with the environment, making them virtually invisible to the Xyrax. It was a game-changer. 
Tari shook his head in disbelief. Incredible, and what did they see? Something that shocked even our most experienced scientists. They witnessed a group of Xyrax working together to take down a Gargantua. A Gargantua? But that's impossible. Those beasts are over six meters tall and have scales that can withstand anything. Even the Xyrax avoid them. That's what we thought, too. But Russell's team saw it with their own eyes. A pack of Xyrax led by this massive alpha male used these complex strategies and coordinated attacks to bring the Gargantua down. It was like nothing we've ever seen before. Tauri leaned back in his chair, processing this information. So what does this mean? What did Russell make of it? Well, it led him to hypothesize that the Xyrax are not only highly intelligent, but also capable of complex social behaviors and problem-solving skills. And Dr. Chen, the behavioral psychologist, noticed something else. The Xyrax seem to have a hierarchical social structure, not unlike Earth's wolves or lions. Fascinating. So they're not just mindless beasts after all. Exactly. And that's not all they discovered. Jack Thompson, the animal trainer, noticed that the alpha male seemed to be directing the others during the hunt, almost like a general commanding his troops, and Dr. O'Connor, the geneticist, collected samples from the gargantua carcass and found that the Xyrax's claws and teeth had evolved to penetrate even the toughest hides. Tari shook his head in amazement. It's hard to believe. All this time we thought we knew everything there was to know about the Xyrax, but these humans... They've uncovered more in a few weeks than we have in centuries. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, my friend. Wait until you hear what they did next. Tauri leaned forward eagerly. Don't keep me in suspense, Miza. What happened? Miza's eyes sparkled with excitement. Well, it all started when Russell decided to... Miza grinned, clearly relishing the opportunity to recount the next part of the story. Well, that's where things get really interesting. Russell's next step was to attempt to establish a line of communication with the Xerax. Communication with those beasts? Tauri asked incredulously. Exactly. Using the knowledge gained from Dr. Patel's linguistic analysis and Jack Thompson's expertise in animal behavior, Russell and his team began to mimic the Xerax's vocalizations and body language. Tauri shook his head in disbelief. I can't imagine the Xerax took kindly to that, you're right, they didn't. At first the Xyrax were wary and suspicious of these strange creatures, attempting to communicate with them. They would growl, hiss, and even charge at Russell and his team. How did they not get torn to shreds? Patience, my friend, and a whole lot of bravery. Over time, and with great persistence, Russell managed to establish a tentative rapport with the alpha male of the pack. Tauri leaned back in his chair, trying to process this information. I still can't believe it. How did he manage that? Mizar's voice dropped to a conspiratorial whisper. Let me tell you about a pivotal moment. One day, Russell, in a display of trust and courage that stunned even his own team, entered the Xyrax's territory, unarmed and alone. He did what? Tauri exclaimed. He walked right into their den without so much as a stun gun. The alpha male, whom Russell had named Zark, approached him cautiously, sniffing and circling the human. The entire team watched on their monitors with bated breath, certain they were about to witness Russell's demise. Tari found himself holding his own breath, engrossed in the story. But then, in a moment that stunned the observing Romulan scientists, Zark lowered his head and allowed Russell to place his hand on his snout a gesture of trust and acceptance among the Xyrax. From that moment on, Russell and his team were able to work more closely with the Xyrax, studying their behavior and even participating in their hunts and social activities. They learned more in those few months than we had in decades. Tauri sat back, his mind reeling with the implications. This changes everything. If we can communicate with the Xyrax, if we can understand them... Then maybe we have a chance. Maybe we can coexist instead of constantly fighting for survival. Russell and his team, they've given us hope. Real hope for the first time in generations. Mizar nodded solemnly. And to think we were ready to dismiss them as just another group of crazy humans, 
but their ingenuity, their audacity to try what we never dared. It's humbling. Tauri was about to respond when suddenly... Tauri was about to respond when suddenly... Mizar's eyes lit up with excitement. But wait, there's more. Dr. O'Connor made a groundbreaking discovery while studying the Xyrax's DNA. Tauri leaned forward, his curiosity piqued. What did he find? He discovered that the Xyrax have an incredibly advanced immune system, capable of fighting off even the deadliest pathogens known to our galaxy. That's remarkable, Tauri exclaimed. The implications for medical research could be immense. Mizar nodded. Exactly. Dr. O'Connor believed that the Xyrax's immune system could hold the key to curing many of the galaxy's most devastating diseases. But there was a problem. They needed to find a way to safely study the Xyrax's immune system without harming the creatures or disrupting their social structure. It was a delicate balance. Mizar grinned. That's where Russell's bond with Zark came into play. They decided to approach the alpha male, who had grown to trust Russell implicitly. And what happened? Using a combination of vocalizations and gestures, Russell explained to Zark that they needed to collect small samples of the Xyrax's blood and tissue for study. It was a tense moment, but to the amazement of the Romulan scientists, Zark seemed to understand. Tauri's eyes widened. He agreed to the request. Not only did he agree, but he allowed Dr. O'Connor to collect the necessary samples from him and several other members of the pack. It was a process that would have been impossible without the trust and communication that Russell had established with the Xyrax. Tauri shook his head in disbelief. The more I hear about these humans, the more impressed I am. Their ability to connect with and understand these creatures is truly remarkable. Mizar nodded solemnly. It's a lesson we could all learn from. But the story doesn't end there. With the samples collected, Dr. O'Connor and his team set to work analyzing the Xyrax's immune system. What they found was even more incredible than they had hoped. Tauri leaned back in his chair, his mind reeling with the implications of the research conducted by Russell and his team. So what you're saying is that the Xyrax's immune system could potentially revolutionize not only medicine, but also our ability to colonize new worlds. Mizar nodded, a glint of excitement in his eyes. Precisely. Dr. O'Connor and his team began to unravel the secrets of the Xyrax's immune system, and what they found was truly remarkable. You see, the Xyrax have evolved to thrive in the harsh, unpredictable environment of Romulus Prime, and their immune system plays a crucial role in that adaptation. How so? Tauri inquired, leaning forward with interest. Well, the Xyrax's immune system is incredibly efficient at identifying and neutralizing new threats, whether they be pathogens, toxins, or even environmental hazards. This allows them to quickly develop resistance to new challenges, ensuring their survival in even the most hostile conditions. Exactly. Mizar exclaimed. Imagine being able to create adaptive environmental suits or even genetically engineered crops that could withstand the harsh conditions of unexplored planets. The possibilities are endless. Tauri nodded thoughtfully. I can see why the Romulan government would be so interested in this research. We've been looking for ways to expand our empire beyond our home system for generations. Mizar grinned. And that's where things got really exciting. Russell and his team knew that they needed the support of the Romulan government to take their research to the next level. So, they arranged a meeting with the High Council to present their findings and propose a joint venture between their team and Romulan scientists. I can only imagine how that meeting went, Tauri chuckled. It was intense, to say the least, Mizar replied. Russell stood before the High Council, his team by his side, and laid out their discoveries in meticulous detail. He spoke of the Xyrax's incredible immune system, the potential applications for medicine and colonization, and the benefits that a joint research venture could bring to the Romulan people. Tauri leaned forward, hanging on every word. And how did the High Council react? Mizar's grin widened. They were impressed, to say the least. 
The High Council had long been seeking ways to expand our empire, and Russell's proposal offered a tantalizing glimpse into a future where the Romulans could thrive on even the most hostile of worlds. After a lengthy deliberation, they agreed to provide additional funding and resources for the project on the condition that Romulan scientists be included in every step of the research process. A wise decision, Tauri nodded. The knowledge and expertise of our own scientists combined with the groundbreaking discoveries of Russell's team could lead to advancements beyond our wildest dreams. And that's exactly what happened, Mizar said, his voice filled with pride. In the months that followed, Russell and his team worked side by side with Romulan scientists, sharing their knowledge and techniques and pushing the boundaries of what was thought possible. Together they began to unravel the mysteries of the Xyrax's immune system, and with each new discovery, the potential applications for our people grew more and more exciting. Teori sat back in his chair, his mind buzzing with the possibilities. To think all of this started with one human's crazy idea to study the Xyrax, it's almost too incredible to believe. Mizar nodded solemnly. It just goes to show that sometimes, the most groundbreaking discoveries come from the most unexpected places, and in this case, it was the audacity and ingenuity of a single human that opened up a whole new world of possibilities for our people. Misa leaned back in his chair, shaking his head. It was a difficult lesson for all of us, Tauri. We Romulans pride ourselves on our scientific prowess, our ability to understand and control the world around us, but working with the Xyrax, we quickly realized that our usual methods simply wouldn't suffice. Tauri nodded thoughtfully. It's a humbling experience, to be sure, to realize that despite all our knowledge and technology, we still have so much to learn from these creatures and their human companions. Indeed, Mizar agreed. Russell and his team, they understood something fundamental about the Xyrax that we had overlooked. It wasn't just about studying them, about collecting data and running tests. It was about building a relationship, about earning their trust and respect. Tauri leaned forward, his eyes wide with curiosity. How did they do it? How did they manage to bridge that gap between species, to forge a bond with creatures so different from themselves? Mizar smiled, a hint of admiration in his voice. Patience, Tauri, patience and empathy. Russell and his team, they took the time to observe the Xyrax, to learn their language and their customs. They didn't just see them as subjects to be studied, but as individuals with their own thoughts and feelings. And that made all the difference? Tori asked. It did, Mizar confirmed. When that young Romulan scientist tried to take that blood sample, he was thinking only of the data, of the potential breakthrough it could lead to. But he forgot the most important thing, the Xyrax itself. He didn't take the time to communicate, to explain what he was doing and why. And in his haste, he violated that fragile trust that Russell had worked so hard to build. It was, Mizar agreed. But Russell, he didn't panic. He didn't resort to force or aggression. Instead, he approached the Xyrax calmly, speaking to it in its own language. He reassured it, showed it that he meant no harm. And incredibly, the creature listened. It allowed Russell to tend to its wounds, to calm it down and prevent further violence. Tauri sat back, marveling at the story. It's almost hard to believe that a human could have such a profound effect on a creature so alien to us. But that's just it, Tari, Misa said, leaning forward intently. Russell and his team, they don't see the Xyrax as alien. They see them as equals, as partners in this grand endeavor of discovery and understanding. And that's what we Romulans must learn if we hope to succeed in this joint venture. Tari nodded slowly, considering Misa's words. So what happened next? How did Russell and his team work with our scientists to develop these new protocols? Mizar sat up straighter, his eyes sparkling with enthusiasm. It was a collaborative effort, Tari. Russell and his team shared their knowledge freely, teaching our scientists the intricacies of Xyrax's behavior and communication. They worked side by side, human and Romulan alike, to develop new methods of interaction that prioritized safety, respect, and mutual understanding. Tari leaned forward his curiosity piqued by the mention of long-term outcomes. So what were the ultimate results of this human Xyrax collaboration? 
How did it shape the future of our people and the galaxy at large? Mizar smiled, a glint of pride in his eyes. The impact was truly profound, Tauri. As the joint venture progressed, Russell and his team continued to make groundbreaking discoveries that had far-reaching implications for both the Romulans and the wider galactic community. Such as, Tauri prompted, eager to learn more, one of the most significant developments came from Dr. Kim, the technology specialist on Russell's team. He had been working tirelessly to find a way to harness the Xyrax's unique sensory abilities. Precisely, Mizar confirmed. These abilities gave the Xyrax an unparalleled advantage when navigating and hunting in the dense, treacherous forests of Romulus Prime. Dr. Kim, inspired by these capabilities, set out to develop a new type of sensor array that could replicate the Xyrax's sensory prowess. Mizar grinned. More than successful, Tari. Dr. Kim's creation, which he dubbed Xyrax Vision, was a true marvel of engineering. By mimicking the Xyrax's sensory mechanisms, the array could detect a wide range of stimuli that our own technology had previously been blind to. The applications must have been countless, Tauri mused. Indeed they were, Mizar agreed. From improving spacecraft navigation systems to enhancing the accuracy and sensitivity of medical diagnostic tools, Xyrax Vision had the potential to revolutionize multiple fields of study and industry. Tari's eyes widened as he began to grasp the full scope of the discovery. And the Romulan government? They recognized this potential? Mizar nodded, his expression turning serious. They did, and they acted swiftly to secure exclusive rights to the development and distribution of the technology. The deal they struck with Russell's team included substantial funding for further research and refinement of Xyrax vision. A wise move, Tari acknowledged. By investing in this partnership, our government ensured that the Romulan people would be the primary beneficiaries of these advancements. Exactly, Mizar said. The agreement cemented the collaboration between Russell's team and the Romulan Empire, setting the stage for a future in which the fruits of this unprecedented cooperation would continue to shape our society and our place in the galaxy. Tauri sat back, his mind reeling with the implications. To think all of this began with one human's determination to understand and work with a species we had long considered our enemy. It's a testament to the power of cooperation and open-mindedness. Mizar smiled a look of genuine admiration on his face. That's the lesson we must take from this, Tauri. By embracing the knowledge and perspectives of others, even those we once feared or misunderstood, we open ourselves up to possibilities we never could have imagined on our own. Mizar leaned forward, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. But that's not all, Tauri. What Russell and Dr. Patel discovered about the Xyrax's long-distance communication was truly... Remarkable. Tari's eyes widened. What did they find? As they spent more time observing the Xyrax, they noticed that the creatures were able to communicate with each other, over vast distances, even when separated by miles of dense forest. How is that possible? Tauri asked, his brow furrowed in confusion. Miza grinned. The Xyrax, it seems have developed a unique ability to emit low-frequency vocalizations that can travel incredibly far through the trees and undergrowth. These sounds, which are almost imperceptible to our ears, allow the Xyrax to coordinate their movements and activities, even when they can't see each other. Through careful observation and recording of the Xyrax's vocalizations, Mizar explained, they set up a network of sensors throughout the Xyrax's territory, which allowed them to track the creature's movements and analyze their calls. What they found was a complex system of communication, with different vocalizations and vibrations conveying information about location, food availability, and potential threats. Tauri sat back in his chair, his mind reeling with the implications. So the Xyrax have developed their own language, one that allows them to communicate over great distances and coordinate their activities as a group. Mazar nodded. Exactly. 
and this discovery has significant implications for our own communication technologies. Dr. Patel, working closely with our scientists, has begun to develop a new type of device that can replicate the Xyrax's long-distance vocalizations. What do you mean? Tari asked, leaning forward with interest. This technology, which they're calling Xyrax comms, has the potential to revolutionize communication across the galaxy, particularly in areas where traditional methods like radio waves and electromagnetic signals are unreliable or impossible. Tari's eyes widened as he began to understand the potential applications. Like in the dense atmospheres of gas giants or the radiation-heavy environments of neutron stars. Precisely, Mizar said, his voice filled with excitement. Imagine being able to communicate clearly and efficiently in these extreme environments without the need for bulky, specialized equipment. Xyrax comms could open up entirely new frontiers for exploration and scientific discovery. Tari shook his head in amazement. It's hard to believe that a species we once considered to be nothing more than dangerous beasts could hold the key to such groundbreaking advancements. Mizar smiled, a look of genuine respect on his face. That's the power of collaboration, Tauri. By working together, by learning from each other's strengths and unique abilities, we can achieve things that we never thought possible. As Mizar's voice trailed off, a heavy silence descended upon the two Romulans. Tauri's eyes were wide with disbelief, his mind reeling from the tragic turn of events in the human Xyrax collaboration. I can't believe it, Tauri whispered, shaking his head. After all the progress they made, all the breakthroughs, for it to end like this. Mizar nodded solemnly, his own expression pained. It was a devastating blow to everyone involved. Russell and his team, they... they were beside themselves with guilt and sorrow. But how could they have known? Tari asked, his voice tinged with desperation. How could anyone have predicted that the very bond they had worked so hard to forge would ultimately lead to the Xyrax's decline? Mizar sighed heavily, his shoulders slumping. That's just it, Tauri. They couldn't have known. It was an unintended consequence, a tragic example of the delicate balance that exists in any interspecies relationship. Tauri leaned forward, his brow furrowed. So what did they do when they realized what was happening? They did the only thing they could, Mizar replied, his voice heavy with emotion. They tried to make it right. Dr. O'Connor and the rest of the team, they worked tirelessly to find a solution, to develop some kind of treatment or intervention that could help the Xyrax recover. And did they find a solution, I mean? Tauri asked, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Mizar shook his head sadly. No, they didn't. Despite all their efforts, all their knowledge and resources, they couldn't find a way to reverse the damage that had been done. The Xyrax had become too dependent, too reliant on the human's presence and care. Tauri sat back in his chair, a look of devastation on his face. So what happened to them, the Xyrax? Some of them adapted, Mizar replied, his voice barely above a whisper. They managed to relearn the skills and behaviors they needed to survive on their own, but others, others weren't so lucky. Tauri closed his eyes, a single tear rolling down his cheek. And Russell and his team, how did they cope with the loss? It was hard on them, Mizar said, his own voice thick with emotion. They had poured so much of themselves into the project, into their relationship with the Xyrax, to see it all fall apart, to know that they were responsible. It was a heavy burden to bear. Tari nodded, his expression one of deep understanding. I can only imagine the guilt they must have felt, the sense of responsibility. It's a lesson for us all, Mizar said, his gaze distant. The power we have, the influence we can wield, it's not something to be taken lightly. Every action we take, every decision we make, it has consequences, sometimes ones we can never fully anticipate. Tari was silent for a long moment, his thoughts tumbling over themselves in his mind. But despite everything that happened, despite the tragedy of it all, what Russell and his team accomplished, what they learned, it was still incredible, wasn't it? Mizar nodded, 
a small smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. Yes, it was. The knowledge they gained, the discoveries they made. They've changed the course of our understanding, our very way of thinking about the universe and our place in it. And that's something to be celebrated, Tari said, his own smile mirroring Mizar's. Even in the face of such loss, such heartbreak, the human spirit, their determination and ingenuity, it's an inspiration to us all. Mizar leaned forward, his eyes sparkling with a renewed sense of purpose. You're right, Tari, and that's why we must continue their work, why we must build upon the foundation they laid. We owe it to them, to the Xyrax, to ourselves. Tauri nodded, his own determination rising to match Mizar's. Then let's get started. Let's honor their legacy and create a future where the bonds between species are not a liability, but a strength, a future where we can learn from each other, grow together, and thrive. As the two Romulans sat there, their hearts heavy with the weight of the past but their minds alight with the possibilities of the future, they knew that the story of the human Xyrax collaboration was far from over. It was a story that would be told and retold, a reminder of the incredible things that could be achieved when two species work together, and a warning of the care and responsibility that such a bond demanded. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.